joining me to do all this and so much more, Hawaiian Brian, the podcasting lion, the king of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network, Mr. Co-host to you. He is Steve Mongo McMichael's wrestling trainer, the great Brian Last. Aloha, Jim. A pleasure to be here once again. (laughs) And I'm guessing that means you saw that new Steve Mongo McMichael Twitter account that's popped up in the last week. I know it is. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. You know what? The only thing it's missing is No, 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 please, please. All right, I won't go there, but no. There is a new Twitter account. It's it's at that's our Mongo. Um, and it is all the footage. I see, I never saw this stuff first run uh, a lot of it because it, it, during the attitude era, when I was living in Connecticut, 96 to 99, I would tape all the shows, but I would just zip through both ours and the opposition to see some specific big happening. Cause like then as now I didn't have a lot of free time and I didn't want to watch it for entertainment. Um, and then, obviously, when I was here in Louisville, it was the last couple of years of WCW, but my God, I don't know how long Mongo's career lasted. I got to study up on him, but these are clips of every fuck up and foul up. And I mean, one day he fell. Was it Kevin Sullivan that shot, tried to shoot him off to give him something, and he fucking stumbled across the ring and fell through the ropes and straight to the floor? <laughs> I think so, yeah. But just all these clips of this stuff, at that's our Mongo. I have no idea who's doing this. This is not a paid plug, but it just, it's hilarious. And he, I remember Flair's talked about him, and they, they all loved him because he was a great football player, apparently. I'm not a big football expert, but apparently he was a big big-time football player. And as far as being in the horseman, Flair's a he fit as a personality outside the ring. Hey, you know, he he was prime horseman material outside the ring and in, in personal life, going out in the club, whatever. But he didn't get it in the fucking ring. And my God, I've been so... It's been my only uh, amusement on Twitter, as I'll get to in a second, here over the past few days. But, but you got to see that. Anybody that has to... This could be the biggest Twitter account in all of wrestling. Because... Steve Mongo McMichael, and we're going to use this term later on in the program, had the worst case of happy feet ever. Happy feet are when a guy has just has had no training or just is not a natural in the ring, just has no idea what he's doing. You know, it's it's the epitome of a of a guy that's trying to imitate shit that he's seen on television. He doesn't really know how to do it. And and one of the side effects of that is happy feet, as it's called in wrestling training school or used to be. I don't know about these days, uh, but the old timers, I bet if you go to Tom Pritchard's class, I bet you'll hear about happy feet. But that's when no matter what you're doing, if you're in a headlock or you're holding a headlock on somebody, your feet are always moving. They're moving back and forth. They're moving up and down or they're moving more often than they need to be. Or if you're getting shot off or you're shot to the turnbuckle or you're just running, hitting the ropes, doing a crisscross back and forth, you're taking extra steps. Your feet are moving in different places. They don't stop. Even when you're still, your feet are still going and they get in the way of things and people and Mongo McMichael had what I would call the most terminal case of happy feet I've ever seen in anybody in a wrestling school in my life. And that's why he was always falling the fuck down. So if you go to the, and you watch these clips at any time, his feet are visible. <clears throat> you can learn what happy feet is in a, in a, a proper wrestling training program, but you know what Twitter's done to me, don't you? I've got the old Twitter or the new Twitter now. I'm stuck in the new Twitter. Oh, you were fighting that for a long time. Well, yes, I got a a thing where you, you, I don't know the technical terminology, but you typed in and you clicked on it and it would install whatever the fuck that the old Twitter was when they changed the layout about what, a year ago, maybe, or even more. And Twitter looked completely different, and all the shit's in a different place, and it looks like shit, and I hated it, right? So I had this old Twitter on my computer because 
as as everyone, I guess everyone knows, we got a lot of new listeners. I tweet on the computer because I don't have a smartphone. As a matter of fact, I heard from one of the fine crack legal assistants in the new law office, the law office of Stephen P. New, 888-692-8084, that I'm a dream client. That I've because you know how you hear about all the whenever they do discovery in these lawsuits and they it gather the evidence, they subpoena all of the text messages that you've sent and the emails and the Facebook and all this stuff, the way people talk now. And they say that I'm a dream client because I've never sent a text message in my life. I have, I have no smartphone. I don't know how to use Facebook and it never intend to learn. I rarely email and never about anything sensitive and especially to somebody I couldn't trust. And Basically, everything I've got's handwritten, rolled up in a tin can and buried in the backyard. So I'm a, but anyway, I go on Twitter here a couple of days ago and it says the, this, whatever, so no longer supports this platform. Click here to learn more. Well, I don't want to learn anymore because I won't understand it anyway. But the point is, I can't get my old Twitter back. So now, I, so in that, the new one is unwieldy, it's clunky, it's, it, it, the shit's all over the place. It doesn't look the same. I hate change. I can't get it when I'm looking at it because I'm looking for the other shit. And so I've missed a lot on Twitter the past few days because I don't have the patience to look at this ugliness now. It, I mean, normally Twitter is only ugly because of content, but now it's ugly visually. So if I'm missing anything on Twitter, I apologize. Why did they do that? They're always tinkering with these things, with social media. You get used to the way Facebook looks or the way Twitter looks, the way they operate, and then they change everything up on you. Well, sometimes they give you a warning, like, we are going to be going to this new one. You could test it out now, give it a test drive, and if you don't like it, you can go back to your old one for the time being, and then you'll have no choice. Well, my choice is how about just take your thing that you're tinkering with and shove it up your ass because until they outlaw papers and pens and pencils, I can communicate just fine. So I know what I'm doing.